On today's show, a breakdown Mars magical night as he leads the Leafs past Seattle in a shootout. And Nikita Zadorov on the move, but it's not to Toronto. What do we think of the trade? And could Tree Living have matched the offer? We'll chat about that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs Center podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. That means if you would have put down a little $5 money line wage on the Leafs tonight, you would have got yourself a $150 bonus. So make sure you don't miss out. Potentially make that happen on Saturday when the Leafs take on the Bruins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Uh, so yeah, Maple Leafs get it done. Wasn't pretty. You definitely had you pulling your hair out towards the end of the game, but at the end of the day, two points is two points. But I think the story of tonight was, uh, was Mitch Marner, Mitch Marner and his big breakout. Yep. He has never taken that. Uh, what are we calling it? The bubble helmet, the bubble, oh, yeah, that, that, that bubble, like that's here to stay forever. Like he's, yeah. he's Adam Banks. He's rocking that bubble helmet for the re- Adam Banks, Charlie Conway, whichever <laughs> mighty duck you want to talk about who wore those back in the back in the day. Uh, I think it was what D2 they grabbed. They put on those bubbles and they were team USA hockey. That's yep. what it reminds me of all the time. Whenever I see those bubbles, um, he was but like, honestly, he was great tonight. Yeah, no, he was. This is the Mitch Marner that we've been waiting to see. Sure. Was. Right. The energy was there. The, the sw- you saw Swagger. it in the excitement. Yeah. You saw the excitement in the when he scored. That's the Mitch Marner that we've been missing this, you know. And, you know, a, a game like this, you hope that it's obviously it's one that he can build off of. But it also just goes to show that it's never been about ability for these guys. The ability has been there. It's they got to just go out and do it. Well, confidence. It's it's been yeah. about confidence at the end of the day, and and I, I mean, I don't think it's the first time either of us have suggested that. Where you know, Mitch Marner didn't all of a sudden turn into a bum on the ice. Like the guy is still, you know, an all star right winger. He's he's a top twenty player in the league. I still believe. Um, he just wasn't playing like it. And, and tonight he showed you, hey, when I'm confident, when I got my swagger, when I'm, you know, got the puck uh, on my stick and I'm, I'm, you know, ripping through the neutral zone and I get and on a breakaway, I, I can I can finish. I can, I can flip that puck up over the goaltender and put it into the back of the net. And he did it not once, not twice, not thrice, but four times because he got the shootout winner as well. Uh, so, yeah, big, big breakout night for Mitch Marner. You just hope that he can, like, bring it forward into Boston. You know, now it's, it's okay, can we see this Marner consistently? Because that's been the issue. Like, Matthews and Marner, they've, they've had games where they've come in and it's like, okay, there we go, they're here. Like, Marner had back-to-back four-point outings, you know, last month. But outside of those two games, it's been like, eh. So can he build off of this? That's what we want to see from him moving forward. Yeah, it's the consistency. Your your star players, even if they're not putting up points each and every night, they have to consistently put forth, you know, the effort to show that they are the best player on the ice, right? They're going to be dangerous each and every time they're on the ice, right? And you mean you look at this game, and you saw when the star players weren't exactly, you know, when they were kind of taking their foot off the gas a little bit, that's where this team got into trouble. So. You know, that it, this game was a reminder of just how good this team can be when everything is working the way it's supposed to. 
Yeah, and and we'll we'll get to you know the blown lead in just a moment. But I you know I want to give a couple of guys their flowers before we kind of tear down the team a little bit. Um, but Joseph Wall, I thought again was fantastic. He did indeed get the start as we predicted and and as we you know thought he should, and uh, rewarded Sheldon Keith with that decision by having another great game. Massive stop in overtime on Jordan Everly, like. I thought that was game for sure. When I saw that kind of tic-tac-toe play, I was like, oh, here it is. That's game. It's over. You know, only get one point out of the night. But Joseph Wall said, no, 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 no. Kicks out the pad, keeps it going, and then was perfect in the shootout. Uh, another another big statement game for, for Joe Wall. He should get the net again Saturday in Boston. Mm -hmm. thousand percent. Like, I, there should be no doubt about it. And, you know, Sheldon Keefe kind of, his comments after the game, he's the reason they got two points. Mm -hmm. That's back to back right? games where he's the reason why. Exactly. So I, there's no doubt that he should get the next start. It's, you know, it's also about building a rhythm for him, right? To see, is he capable of taking on this workload? Because they're going to have to figure out which guy they can roll the ball with, right? I mean, might as well start leaning one way or the other at some point. I didn't, you know, <laughs> Joseph Wool's not giving you any reason to take him out of the net right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I just uh, logged on to Twitter. The Maple Leafs put this on. Uh, just posted that with the title <laughs> Fishbowl Flex. So Mitch Marner got the game belt. Will he get one of our three stars of the game? Oh, let's take a break. Let's come back. Let's get to our three stars. And then we'll tie a little bow on this one with a couple other nuggets from the night. And then Nikita Zadorov was dealt. He was a guy who Toronto had been looking into for quite some time. A lot of Leafs Nation wanted Brad Trilving to pull the trigger there. He's no longer available. He's uh, he's elsewhere. It did go to a Canadian market, just not in Toronto. We'll share our thoughts on that deal and what that means for Toronto uh, in a little bit as well. But before we get into all that, I do want to tell you about one of today's show sponsors. It's our good friends over at FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NHL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NHL season. FanDuel, official partner of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On at Leafs podcast. It's Mike DeStefano and Dave Morasuti. We're reacting to a Maple Leafs 4-3 victory in a shootout over the Seattle Kraken. That's now two wins in a row via the shootout. And that's kind of the one, I guess, concern that we can pull from these last couple of games. Like, you never really want to pick apart wins as, as much as possible. But again, tonight, another two-goal lead blown in the third period. We've seen this happen over the course of the last couple of weeks a few times now. This is becoming a concerning trend, Dave. Oh, yeah, I would say so. Like, it's not that they blow the lead because look teams blow leads it happens it's who they're blowing the leads to right chicago last week um i guess they were up against pittsburgh at one point yeah. and then pittsburgh's like this was that was a little bit different but like chicago and seattle two teams that have been struggling minnesota right? they were up 3-1 when they were over in in sweden and they right? allowed them to come back now again much like tonight they won the game in extra time but still blew a lead to a team that's pretty low in the rankings. Like it's, I, it's one, th I would like to see this team when they get a lead, like three, one, four, you know, pile on, right? I, Keep going. I'm not saying embarrass the, the team, but put them, put like, give the opposition the thought of you are not coming back in this game. This game is feta complete. Mm. And they haven't done that. Mm. Like, yeah, and, and even I know some people are like, ah, oh, they got to shut things down. No, this Leafs team isn't a team that's going to just shut things down. Not with this blue line. This Leafs team needs to keep the foot on the gas pretty much is the way to go about it, right? Like good teams 
they don't give an inch, right? They don't tell the other team, we're going to leave a door open for you to get back into the game. And that's what the Leafs have been doing. You know, yeah, they've won games, but this is not the way you want to win games, you know, all year long. I understand that right now the team's mentality is, it's you know, we got two points. Yeah, you got two points, but you also have lost points because you were careless with the lead. Uh, you mentioned it, the the team in a bit of a, a, a situation on the blue line right now. Uh, Mark Giordano missed the game. He's week to week now with a broken finger. We do know that. That news came out earlier today. Uh, no updates on John Klingberg. No updates on Timothy Lilligren. So any of those three are, are not expected to be in the Leafs lineup anytime soon. Uh, so what you saw tonight is pretty much what you're going to get. What did you make of the blue line in this game tonight? I mean, I, I thought they had, you know, they're pretty decent. You know, obviously the third period was staying, but like, you know, the one, the one goal, um, the Ely Tolvanen goal, like that's not really the blue. Uh, I think it was Brody defending on the play, but it wasn't Brody's fault. David Camp. Camp, I don't know, what Camp don't know what the hell he was doing on that play at all. You know, you're either you either if you're gonna go for the swing of the stick to knock the puck off, either knock the puck off or take the body. Like, yeah, that was just not. He just like half committed to playing defense on that one. And to me, you know, Sheldon Keith has been ripping guys on the bench. I hope David Camp gets a little bit of a ripping for something like that because he is, you know, the Leafs gave him a raise as a premier shutdown centerman, right? A guy who's supposed to be. Really good defensively, good on the draws and things like that. And he hasn't been doing it, right? And to me, that's you can't let things like that slide. Uh, I'm curious what the lines uh, or what the ice time was for the Leafs blue liners. If, if you know, because it seemed as though you know Riley uh, and uh, and Brody ended up double shifting sometimes and we're moving around the lineup a little bit here uh, and we're Riley, playing more than. So, yeah, Riley, uh, 26 minutes, 8 seconds. Brody, 23 minutes, 34 seconds, which makes sense because you see, like, Timmons, you know, 14 minutes. That's a, that's a regular amount of time, I suppose, for uh, a defenseman, for your third-pair guy. You're seeing the same number, Simo Benoit, just a hair under 15 minutes. So, yeah, it looked like they, they you know, were moving – Riley and Brody around like in it depending on where you know in game situations and, and when it called for Riley to be on the ice and more offensive situations and then Brody on the ice for some defensive situations with Jake McCabe sometimes um or you know Lagason Benoit whoever it may have been so you know you, you did see Sheldon Keefe in a way try and mitigate the fact that he's got a weak blue line by trying to get a couple extra shifts for Riley and Brody um, throughout the game to try and prop up those other guys who are, let's face it, you know, bottom pair, seventh defenseman, for, for like realistic, like Lagson, Benoit, and, uh, and, and, why am I, why am I blanking? Who's the other one? Connor Timmons. Yeah. I mean, those three, not, not, none of them were expected to be in this team's top six. They're all expected to be either seventh defenseman or down in the AHL. And now they've got to play some minutes here for Toronto. So uh, I guess you could say good on, on Sheldon Keefe for figuring out a way to try and mitigate, you know, that as much as possible by giving Riley and, and Brody a couple extra shifts. So uh, I will say that that's, you know, that's, that's coaching. And look, the guy gets, uh, gets his licks on this show, obviously, and, and a lot of shows, but when it comes to in-game situations, he's, he's done a pretty good job coaching this team uh, over his tenure here. All right, uh, let's get to the three stars, Dave. Uh, why don't we start with, yes. Before we get to the three stars. I guess mm. maybe I could have made this a somewhat a third star, but it would have been a cheap one. Are we going to just ignore the fact that you were somehow <laughs> trying to find a way to get onto the TSN panel? <laughs> the lease panel tonight? The, yes. the lease panel? Overdrive uh, night. And you, you subtly, I don't, I mean, I don't know if this was a subtle hint by you yesterday when you were saying, mm, you know, overdrive. I said, I cannot, I cannot confirm or deny if I'm going to have any involvement in the overdrive Leafs panel. 
Yes, I did say that on yesterday's show. If you if you were listening, and uh, I mean, I wasn't at liberties to say anything, uh, but yeah, I, I got a phone call yesterday, and and you know, the producer said, "Hey, got this idea. Should be a fun little skit. Are you interested in coming in and and helping out?" And I said, "Yeah, of course." So uh, it, it was it was fun, and uh, yeah, right off the hop, there was a, a little cold open. Here it is. We I got it. Or All right, you got it. Okay, let's let's roll it, and then we can kind of break down my terrible acting skills afterwards. <laughs> so, if you are uh, listening to the show, um, I, we could retweet this. It's it's all over Twitter, um, or uh, you know, check out my Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck or the Leafs Twitter at Leafs uh, Locked On Leafs. But uh, go check out this. Yeah, go check us out on YouTube and subscribe on YouTube. That'd be greatly appreciated as well. Uh, so here is the video. Uh, I don't know if you want to restart it because I kind of talked over it for a little bit here. What the? <laughs> oh, come on, Jimmy. I don't know. Somebody put them on the email. I'm sorry. I can't do this. This is a joke. But James, it's an overdrive night. Sorry, buddy. I think you got to take a lap. But I got tremendous information. <laughs> so there it is. So not great for audio for podcast purposes because there's there's acting in there and, and the visual definitely makes it uh, makes it. So you got to go check it out for sure if you're listening to, to the podcast. Um, what did you think of it? What, what did you make? Oh, man. Old dog, old dog sold that beautifully. I will Thank give old dog a lot of credit for <laughs> for how that but for that one played out. Um, I mean, look, I've seen gimmicks like this before many times. I thought it was pretty it was done pretty well, actually. Oh, like, I appreciate that. So, I, I, you, I know you're you're a hard, harsh critic, but I thought you know you're the information guy. We all know you're the information guy, like literally. Do you re did you record that? I guess just before they started, or when was that recorded? So, uh, yeah, that was that was pre-recorded. So we recorded that at about four thirty ish, uh, like before five o'clock, and it was canned. And then that was just like the cold open. They rolled tape, and then uh, on they went with with their show. So if you didn't see like the first literally thirty seconds of the pregame show at six thirty, you missed it. Uh, so it, you, had, you to, had it afterwards. Cause yeah, I was going to say a lot of people would have missed it. Yeah. And yeah. It, yeah. It's all over social media now though. It's, it's out there. It's, it's making but, the rounds. But the other question I had was, uh, well, I, cause you answered, cause literally on overdrive, you went on another information rant. So like, <laughs> you're the information guy, like that is your thing. So, well, yeah, I mean, that's the, the, the shtick I suppose that I've got now with these football picks on overdrive is, you know, I've got tremendous information. And uh, so I, I, I knew I was going to have to break out that line at some point on this, you know, throughout this skit. So that's that's that was my one request. I was like, I got to say this at some point. We got to figure out a way where it makes sense, obviously. But I think that line's got to be in there. It's really, you know, that's 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 my catchphrase, right? That's Emerald's BAM. That's that's my thing. Tremendous information. That's 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 what I do. It's what I bring to the table. So. Uh, that was fun. It was fun, you know, getting to work with the with the guys. Um, you know, I work with the OD guys, you know, on a, on a regular basis. But getting to work with James Duffy, uh, you know, a legend, absolute legend in uh, sports broadcasting was was pretty sweet. Yeah, it was uh, James. James as always, he he commits to it. He does commit to it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Okay, why don't we take a, a another break then, actually? And now let's come back, do the three stars, and talk about the Zadorov trade. So we'll we'll get back into the Leafs conversation on the other side. Uh, but first, I want to tell you guys about Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. 
Nylander could score 50 goals. Maybe Mitch could score 50 goals. Probably not, but maybe the least could hoist the Stanley Cup and you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. Uh, All you have to do is pick whether studs like Matthews, Marner, Nylander, McDavid, Crosby, any of these stars will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. And to win a 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Lee fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasies hockey on sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use the promo code Locked On NHL. You'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back into the Locked On Leaves podcast. It's Mike Tsefano and Dave Morasuti. We're a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast. You can find us wherever you find your pods, whatever you stream them from. Uh, you can also find us up on YouTube. We've got new content coming out each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. If you are New to the show, you're just stumbling upon us. We appreciate you sticking it out, uh, you know, 20-plus minutes. That's, that's pretty good grab time. If you stuck around, I would assume that would mean that you've enjoyed the content so far. And if that's the case, give us a little thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment down below as well. I want to know your thoughts on tonight's Leafs and Kraken game. Uh, and I want to know who you think maybe are the three stars from tonight's matchup, because that's what we're going to do right here, right now, Dave. We're going to quickly go through our three stars from the Leafs 4-3 shootout win. And then we'll talk a little bit about this Zadorov trade and what this could mean for the Leafs moving forward. Uh, so the three stars. Give me your third star, pal. Uh, Morgan Riley. You know, I think the numbers kind of speak for themselves. He played more than he, you know, Normally has to and hey man had four four less minutes than in Florida. <sighs> yeah, but they actually had six blue liners in this one, unlike the one in Florida. I'm just playing. But you know, he's um yeah, I mean, is he perfect defensively? No. But you know, it's it's weird that I feel like he plays better when they're giving him more minutes, which you know, for some defensemen they tend to actually play better when they get more more minutes, right? And I, I'm not saying that this is something Sheldon Keefe should be doing with Morgan Riley, but, you know, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing from him, right? I think this is, you know, this stretch of hockey has been some of his best that we've seen in, in quite a while from him, and I just hope he can keep it going because this blue line needs him, right? I think he's one of the more important players on this team when you consider, like, how much responsibility has been put on his shoulders? Uh, Morgan Riley, uh, 26 minutes, eight seconds of ice time, did throw a hit, couple blocks, and was uh, even Steven in plus minus tonight as well. So uh, that was Mar- uh, Morgan Riley's stat line. Uh, I'm giving mine cheating a little bit, as I like to do here. I'm giving mine to the second line. Uh, you know, I thought mm-hmm. that they were incredible. Like you look at the that opening frame. They were all over Seattle. I mean, they were fan. I think they had like a 97 expected goals after the first period uh, of Tavares, Barner, and, and Bertuzzi. Uh, on the night, they had eight minutes and 52 seconds at five on five, led uh, in shot share well up there on the ice at 12 to five, 78. Percent expected goal differential generated six scoring chances, three high danger chances. And then obviously Mitch Marner had a big night scored a goal as well. Um, so, well, he scored three, but you know, one on the power play and uh, they ended up getting one with, with those two guys as well. Um, I, I thought that the second line was, was incredible. And, and this is exactly what we were hoping would happen with Mitch Marner when he got sent, you know, not sent down, but when he made that, little flip mm-hmm. with, with yeah. Nylander and to put him with Tavares, who, you know, they've seen a lot of good success together. Yeah, I know. I thought they were the best line out there, right? Like anytime they were in the Seattle zone, they had a pretty good chance to score. Yeah. And, you know, I give credit to like Bertuzzi and, and Tavares, you know, they've kept playing their steady game, even with the switch of like losing the top score from, from that line hasn't impeded what they've been doing. So you got to give them a lot of credit for that. Uh, Your second star, Dave. 
Uh, Joseph Wall. They don't win that game without Joseph Wall. That save he made in the shootout. Like the three goals. Yeah, he allowed three yeah, goals. Overtime. Right. But the three goals that he allowed were point blank, tough shots. Right. Like Jared McCann. This this trade is going to continue to haunt this team for the rest of like time. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought like that, that save he made in overtime though. Like I thought it was done. I thought oh, it was for done. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's, it's his, I think, uh, noodles did a good job of kind of breaking it down. Like that was like him anticipating the play really well. So yeah, continue to ride the hot hand. Sheldon continue to ride a hot hand. Agreed. He's my second star of the night as well. Uh, you know, for obviously the a lot of the same reasons that that you made there. That that game saving play in overtime on Everly was was you know a, a ten bell save. Like that's one of the best we've seen from a Maple Leafs goaltender so far this season. And to come in a critical time like overtime at that uh, is is pretty good to see. Uh, you know, the underlying numbers show that he once again, as he was in Florida. Uh, you know, he stopped 1.37 goals above expectation uh, throughout the game as well. So you know, it's back to back nights where, yeah, he got peppered and and and, you know, he had his back up against the wall and the team didn't play too well uh, at times in the game. But he came up big that second period alone. The Kraken had out uh, outshot the Leafs 17 to 7. 19 to 5 in scoring chances and 12 to 1 in high danger chances. That was the second period. And like Toronto won that period. <laughs> and so that's literally just because A, uh, Grubauer's kind of caca, and also because the Toronto goalie was so good. So yeah, he gets the second star, which means Bubble Boy gets first star of the night. <laughs> yeah, the fishbowl. Keep the fishbowl around forever. I think. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, th- just like the, even the the breakaway goal, right? Uh, the breakaway goal, and then the shoot, like the shootout goal was like just same. Unreal. <laughs> like the foot, like they they showed the replay of yeah. the footwork on that. Like I was just like, imagine a goaltender watching this guy dancing around like that after two nights ago, where he absolutely flopped his shootout <laughs> attempt. <laughs> Hey, right. yeah, you know, I, I didn't think about that, but, you know, after scoring three goals that night, he clearly had his swagger and his confidence, mm-hmm. right? I wonder if he hadn't scored those goals and he still was coming in on a shootout attempt, does he try that? Like, I don't I don't know if he does. Like, I think in his mind, he's probably thinking, oh, I made a fool of myself. I got caught, you know, with my skates and with my skating. Uh, caught a rut the other night, kind of toe picked the other night on my shootout attempt. Maybe I should just keep it, keep it simple with the feet. But the guy's dancing. The guy had three goals already. He's feeling good about himself, and he's just out there doing what's natural to him. And that's yeah. when he's at his best. Yeah, he he kind of said it in in his interview too. Like, you know, not being a little more patient, right? Keeping things. I wouldn't say simple because there was nothing simple about what Mitch Marner did it did it tonight right but it, it's letting him letting the game like letting the game come to him a little bit not trying to force things that aren't there right so i think that shootout move was like the perfect example of that right yeah Just, you can even look at the the power play goal too like he waited a beat before you know yeah. he he shot the puck in and then he made sure that he corralled it had the right handle and then put it into the back of the net with a little bit of zip um, kind of patiently outweighed to make sure, okay, the goaltender's making this move. I got to get around it. In the past, I mean, he's healed that one timer, right? Like he's he's tried and he's healed it and and doesn't even get a, a shot attempt off. And uh, this time he made no mistake, puts in the back of the net, uh, broke a power play skid that the team was on. It was what, like, oh, for the last 18, I think, or, or oh, for the last 12 or 13. Uh, I think that two in the last 18, then it was like, oh, for. Like eleven, yeah, or twelve, it or something been, like that. It has not been great. No, it hasn't been. But hey, what do we say? Move the puck around and get it down low. It's exactly what they did. They moved it around the ice and then they got it down low, and uh, you know, right at the side of the net there, Marner puts it in the back of the net. So yeah, hat trick. Oftentimes, a hat trick gets you first start here on the Locked On Leafs podcast. 
Okay, so we can put this game behind us. Moving on, uh, they've got Boston on Saturday. Should be, you know, another good game here for Toronto. Good litmus test, I think is uh, is is the term that we like like to use there. Yep. No, wait. is it litmus or litmus? Miss right with an M. Yeah, litmus test. Yes, litmus test. Yes. Okay, so I, I think I said it right. Uh, now I'm confusing myself. Uh, anyways, should be a good game. Uh, I'm hoping Joseph Wall gets the start once again. Uh, but this is a team that they kind of, eh, they got blown out in three straight. Now I know that they won tonight. They did get, uh, they won. I think they shut out San Jose. I want to say, but like San Jose, we're a pretty garbage team, but they did get blown out in three straight leading into that game. So, yeah, three uh, they're not two. playing. Yeah. They're not playing their best hockey right now. So hopefully Toronto can try and take it. They lost the blue jackets, the, the birds. Let's it, that yeah. Is- yeah. They lost to the blue jackets. They Rangers got blown out. Yeah, like the Red Wings blew them out. Um, yeah, it's it hasn't been great for them over the last five, six games or so. So, you know, hopefully Toronto can can take advantage of uh, of uh, Detroit or Boston tomorrow. All right, really quickly, uh, we did see a trade go down in the NHL today that does have some interest in Leafs Nation. I would think uh, Nikita Zadorov, who has been. Uh, the, you know, a, a big name that Leafs Nation has brought up this season uh, as a potential suitor for the Canucks or for the, the Maple Leafs to bring in as a, a potential addition to the blue line. The Canucks beat them to the uh, the finish line, though. They acquired Nikita Zadorov for a third and a fifth round pick. Uh, so that's a potential blue line target off the board. Um how did you feel when you when you saw the news here? Like, were you upset by to to see this trade go through and 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 the the price that was paid? Like, what what were your thoughts when you first saw this deal? I wouldn't say I was upset, but certainly and in, in a way, I kind of felt like it was bound to happen. As soon as the Canucks made that Bovillier trade, I'm like, they're gearing up for something here, clearly, right? And so. When the trade was announced, I wasn't surprised. Obviously, you're just like, ah. Maybe from a lease perspective, like as a lease, you know, somebody covers the lease. You see what, they, you see they, what they paid, and you're just like, ah, like the lease could have definitely have done that trade, right? A third and a fifth. Like that's. A third in 2026. So like yeah. a future third way I, down the line. I think, I think this, I think Darren Dreger said that the, the player right now is like, that would, that would be picked with that as like 15 years old. Yeah, yeah. Right like, now, yeah, he'd be an exceptional status player right now in the American in the Ontario Hockey League, right? So, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a lot to pay, and I did see that there were reports that saying that the Leafs were trying to get a Tanev Zadorov dual trade to happen. Yeah, I think Kevin Weeks right. was reporting that, yeah. and the reason why I think that makes sense is because then the other thing that was being said was the Leafs were trying to get salary retained. On a Zadorov trade, people are like, oh, why do they need to get the Zadorov salary reduced? Well, technically, the lease, you know, with the Klingberg news and things like that, I don't think like the Zadorov trade isn't solving everything that's wrong with this blue line. They need multiple defensemen or better than Nikita Zadorov. Like, we're, I think, you know, I was talking to some people and they're like, yes, Zadorov is that. You know, physical defenseman that everyone likes to see lay the big hits. There are other parts of his game that don't exactly scream. This guy is going to solve a blue line that needs clear upgrades. And I think that's why I wasn't too upset to see that they didn't get Zadorov because I think they have bigger, they should have higher expectations than Nikita Zadorov with the trade, right? The price was fine. Like Vancouver clearly took advantage of the fact that they don't need to reta- have salary retained. The Leafs, unfortunately, if they're going to go out and get multiple defensemen, they're going to have to figure out ways to get the salaries to work. Yes, a third team could get involved as well, but that also increases the cost. In Calgary's situation, like I know Calgary fans are like, that's a light return. The only way you're going to get a better return is if you retain salary. Yeah, and, and and I mean, it was reported that there were possibly better deals out there, but um, you know, they the Vancouver Canucks were able to take on the full 
fright of that three point seven five million dollar cap hit, and the other That's clubs. That's a lot wanted... if you're going to play that guy on the third pairing, right? Yeah, that it is a lot. And that, look, uh, most teams in the NHL don't have that type of cap space to just throw into your club uh, in midseason. Like Toronto, mm-hmm. if it weren't for the Klingberg situation, wouldn't have that space either. Obviously, they've they've right. kind of been gifted uh, some cap space here in the middle of the season with this situation. You know, silver lining, I guess, of of what's going on with John Klingberg. But I, I'm with you. Like I, I I personally think that Jim Rutherford saved Brad Trilliving right here with this move. Like I would not have been pleased if we saw that the Toronto Maple Leafs made this trade, even if it was for a third and a fifth to go out and get Nikita Zadorov. If it was for that full freight, I think that would have been a massive uh, miss by Tree Living and, and and a waste of resources. Like if you just recently got was it four point one five million. Uh, you're not allocating 3.75 of that with another third pair defenseman. Like you're just, that's, that's just not smart. That wouldn't be smart. Um, you need to go out and get a top four guy uh, with that money. That's what this team needs. Not another third pair dude. They need a top four defenseman. And that's unfortunately just not what Nikita Zadorov is or has ever been. Like if you look at yeah. Zadorov this year, and I know everyone loves, you know, he came, he laid a, a, a big hit, when uh, when he was in Toronto and, you know, basically sounds as though the te- everyone on the team was like, oh, yeah, they should go trade for this guy. You want to know where Nikita Zadorov currently ranks among all defensemen in goals against per 60? Not expected, but like actual goals against per 60 this season. I Well, I mean, the Flames have been have not been very good this year, so I'm going to say quite low. Among the 219 defensemen that have played at least uh, 100 minutes of NHL uh, of five-on-five time this year. Nikita Zdorov ranks 182nd out of 219 with a 3.21 goals against per 60. Not great, Bob. Not great. No, it's not. Like, that's the thing. Like, he hasn't been... Like, there's a reason why Calgary... Again, why Calgary is in the position they're in. Yes, they're playing better now. They're winning some games. Like the Zdorov hasn't been the, hasn't exactly helped their situation. And you know he asked for he did he asked for a trade out. He got his trade out. I I think yeah the Leafs w- are better served addressing going shooting higher, as they say right. Like that's that's where I think the Leafs need to do going forward. They can't if they're gonna spend assets to get. I mean. A rental, which I'm not a fan of always going for rentals. They should try to, you know, get someone with some term. I know there's always complications with that, but you know, I, I do think that this uh this trade wouldn't have exactly it wouldn't have moved the needle as much. Yeah, would he be an upgrade over like a Simon Benoit? Right. The, yeah. But they 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 need they someone need better than put, that. Yes, they do. So I, I think by not making this deal, I think that it leaves uh, room for Toronto to, to make a bigger move. And and I think that's a win in my book. So, yeah, I, I think that Jim Rutherford kind of saved Brad Trilliving by by him not making that trade and not making the deal. And now you look, and, and they've still got that $4.15 million to allocate toward a top four defenseman. Not another third-pair guy, but a true legitimate top four defenseman. Whether that's Chris Tanev, I, I do not know. Like that's a guy who I would like for them to to still go after. Possibly, maybe it's a Brett Pesci, um, but someone who can legitimately play twenty minutes a night, play on your top pair alongside Morgan Riley, perhaps uh, play on your penalty kill and be you know shot suppressing force. Um, Zdorov wasn't going to be that anyway, so I wouldn't be upset, Lee fans, about this. And yeah, you could look at it and say, oh, Tree Living wasn't willing to pay a third and a five. It wouldn't have been a three and a five if they had to retain money, first of all. So the other reason why they, at least a second round pick, which which they don't have, by the way. The Leafs literally do not have a second round pick for the next like three or four years. They trade them all away. <laughs> so yeah, it, it would have been a more expensive acquisition price for the Maple Leafs. They I guarantee you a third and a fifth was not on the table for Brad Trilliving because he was unwilling to take Zadorov at the full at uh, 3.75 freight, which obviously he shouldn't have been. So I wouldn't look at the return and look at the price and be like, ah, 
Leafs could have matched it. Yeah, but the Leafs weren't willing to, obviously, and they weren't willing to beat that offer either, or else he probably would be in Toronto right now and not in Vancouver. So uh, I think this leaves uh, opportunity for Toronto to to look elsewhere. We can kind of stop talking about Zadorov. I know you and I have both been a little lukewarm on that rumor anyways. So now that he's off the trade block, uh, Toronto gives them an opportunity to explore some other options and, quite frankly, better options, uh, which is exactly what this team needs. Uh, so we'll see what comes of all of this over the weekend. Maybe there'll be some updates on some more names that are entering uh, the trade realm, but uh, Zadorov off to the Canucks, uh, not to Toronto. All right. Uh, anything else that you want to, uh, to talk about before we head out for the weekend, Dave? Beat the Bruins. That's all I... Go beat on, beat the Bruins. Yeah, yeah. Would uh, would enjoy if they were to beat the Bruins. I would enjoy it, indeed. All right, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all podcast platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morris Sudi. Follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. Go ahead, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, a comment down below as well. Who would you like the Maple Leafs to go after and trade? Now that Zdorov's off the market, who's next on your list? Uh, we'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow to break down the weekend slate. But until then, no, we'll be back Monday. Sorry, not tomorrow. We'll be back on Monday to break it all down. Uh, until then, keep it locked right here on Lockdown Leafs.